Is there only one way to God? Well, hey, there's a lot of people with a lot of opinions about this subject. But today we're going to talk about one person and what he has to say about it, and that's Jesus. So what did Jesus have to say about, is there only one way to God? Stick around and let's discuss this today. Well, here's what Jesus had to say about the matter. He says this in John chapter 14 and verse 6. Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Wow, that's pretty plain right there. I mean, Jesus is saying that he is the only way there. He's not saying that he is one of many ways. He's saying that I am the way. Bible theologians call this some of the one of the I am statements where Jesus is proclaiming himself to be God. And right here, he said, I'm the way, the truth and the life. So today we're going to break these down, the way, the truth and the life. But to start off, let's think about this kind of an illustration right here. Let's say that we've got a businessman. OK, this businessman, he is a frequent flyer. He flies all over the country for business. Well, one morning he's leaving DFW and he's headed for JFK, which is in New York. He is very busy that morning. He's running late, man. He's got a million things on his mind. He gets on the plane. He's settling in, um, trying to get all of his stuff, getting his laptop out, trying to get everything set up for his flight. And he's not even paying attention to anything about what the pilot is saying or the crew is saying or anything around him. He's just, he's had a rough morning. Well, after the plane takes off and it's ascending into its flight, and he starts talking to the passenger around him, making a little small conversation about where he's going, what he's doing he comes to the startling revelation that he's on the wrong plane, going the wrong direction. Rather than going to JFK, he's headed to LAX, which is in California. So now listen, he's on the wrong plane. He's headed the wrong direction. Now these people sitting around him, they're the wrong passengers. These are the wrong flight attendants. That's the wrong pilot. Everything is wrong about the trip. It's going in the wrong direction. So it doesn't matter how much he intends that he wants to be in New York. He's headed for Los Angeles. And there's not anything you can do about it now because he's on the wrong flight going the wrong direction. But hey, sometimes life can be the same way. Sometimes we can have good intentions and we just go in the wrong direction. We're on the wrong plane. We're in the wrong location. Hey, we talk about all the time about your position in Christ Jesus. So when you're positioned in Christ Jesus, then you're positioned in the kingdom of God. And that's what we're talking about in these devotionals over and over again. We are hammering down on what it means to live under the kingdom authority rule of Jesus and have him as our king. So, you know, this businessman, I mean, like, he's not going to be all excited about this airplane. You know what I mean? He's, it doesn't matter how comfortable he is. It doesn't matter how smooth the ride is. It's going in the wrong direction. But let's talk about this. Jesus, the way. That's our first thing we'll look at. Okay, let's break these down. So number one, Jesus, the way. The Bible says in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, And there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to people by which we must be saved. Once again, that's very explicit that there's that salvation in no one else, no other name. I mean, like, so, I mean, here, it comes down to this. Do you believe that the Bible is the authoritative word of God? The inerrant authoritative word of God. So if you do, then, then we've got Bible verses throughout the New Testament that talk about Jesus as the only way to God. That's it. Now we look at that and say, man, that is exclusive. Well, it's not exclusive because God is a just God and his justice has got to be satisfied. And Jesus was the only one to do that by dying on the cross for our sins. So he satisfied God's justice and he gives us grace, which is the only way that we can be saved. So, I mean, we got a just God, we want him to be just. And we've got a gracious God, we want him to be gracious. Both of those come together in the cross. So, this whole thing about God being exclusive, 
doesn't hold water if you do believe in the inerrant, authoritative Word of God. So, I mean, there's a lot of people that I have known 22 years of being a pastor. A lot of people I've known that just all of a sudden they realize that they were off course. They were on the wrong plane, going the wrong direction, and they're going to have to make a massive change. It's called repentance, change of direction. <laughs> you know, our, our poor businessman on the plane going the wrong direction, he's got to wait until he gets to Los Angeles before he can change flights. And he's in a lot of trouble, okay? So kind of important to make sure that we're in Christ Jesus right now, okay? Instead of trying to make those, those changes later on. So there is a certainty of Christ's claim that he is the only way. So you see, we live in a time where truths and personal beliefs, man, they abound about who Jesus was and all these different ways of getting to God and all that. Jesus didn't present himself as an option among many. He offered himself as the sole unmistakable path to God. This is not about narrowing our spiritual options. It's about the trustworthiness and the certainty of the scriptures and the promises of Jesus. His declaration of being the way is an invitation to embrace a life that leads to authentic truth and everlasting life. So let's go back and let's talk about our businessman on the flight. His primary concern wasn't the amenities, wasn't how comfortable the flight was. I mean, like if somebody came to him and they said before he got on the flight, okay, we've got two planes. One of them is going to Los Angeles. It, you, can, you can fly first class on that sucker, okay? Or we've got one going to New York, which is his destination. You gotta fly coach, it's gonna be crowded, it's gonna be rough, no amenities. Well, he's gotta be in New York. That's what his plan is. That's where he needs to be. So what do you think he's gonna do? Hey, the same thing is true for us here today. The world we live in, it's offering comfort and ease if we go our own way. Go our own direction, do our own thing. Following Jesus, Jesus said that we must be willing to take up our cross and follow after him. We must be willing to die to ourselves. It's gonna be a rough ride at times. Not a lot of amenities are promised in this. Not here and now, but oh man, lots of rewards are promised in heaven. So, so the second thing, so Jesus, is the truth, okay? Listen to this Bible verse, Colossians chapter two and verse nine. For the entire fullness of God's nature dwells bodily in Christ. Wow, that's big. The fullness of God's nature, think about that. It dwells bodily in Christ. So Jesus is God. That's what that verse is saying. 100% man and 100% God. Man, that's huge. You know, thinking about the fullness of Christ, we realize that Jesus is more than just a moral guide. We're not believing he's just a moral guide, but the very essence of God in human form. It's akin to our businessman suddenly understanding the gravity of being on the wrong flight. It's a moment of profound clarity that demands a reassessment of our perception of Jesus. If the end, entirety of God's nature resides in Jesus, then every word he spoke, every action he took, bears an uncomparable weight of truth and authority. See, so that's why it's so important. Do I believe in the inerrancy and the authority of the word of God? See, because if Jesus is my king, then that's what I've got to be believing. I'm believing that he is the truth. He is the way. And he is the life. He's beyond just a moral teacher. Lots of people talk about him being a moral teacher. To see Jesus merely as a great teacher is like our businessman, you know, thinking, looking around, go, this is a great flight. I'm glad I'm on it. That's crazy. And that's the same way for us today. Hey, listen, if you really read the Bible, believe it, take it at its word, man, there's sometimes that Jesus says some rough, hard teachings that we need. Okay. Number three, let's move on here, okay? Number three, Jesus, the life. Listen to this verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and see, the new has come. Man, what a wonderful truth to be a new creation in Christ Jesus. 
just as the right flight takes you to a desired destination. Being in Christ leads us to a life transformed by His power and His grace. You see, as the Holy Spirit transforms us from the inside out, it changes our values, our priorities, and actions. All these things be begin to reflect the reality of the kingdom of God. We become agents of His love and His grace and His truth in a world that desperately needs them. So we're being transformed from the inside out. See, so that gives us an assurance of our destination. Just as passengers on the right plane, they have confidence in reaching their destination, being in Christ Jesus assures us of our eternal destination. So it's like this, the kingdom of God, when I live in the kingdom of God here and now, then it's coming into my heart and transforming my heart. I begin to experience the kingdom of heaven here and now. That gives me my assurance that I'm going to be in heaven then and there. Does that make sense? See, because that's what we got to get down to today. This is the beauty of living in the kingdom, kingdom living today, is that it fills up our hearts with assurance that we're in the right plane, going the right direction, that everything is going the right way because we're going the kingdom way. That's important. That's essential. That's a huge deal when it comes to seeking first the kingdom of God. So is Jesus, is, is Jesus clear on this? Is he explicit on this? Is there only one way to God? Yes, yes, and yes. He is very explicit. He's the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. So thankful that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. So now God's justice is satisfied and his mercy and his grace are exemplified through Christ. So it's not just that God is keeping people or pushing them away. Anyone now can come to God, but there's only one way. That's through Jesus. Because Jesus died for our sins. We have a holy and a just God, a God that sin cannot get close to. So when we're in Christ Jesus, when we're under the atoning blood of Jesus, we now are made right in God's sight. So now we can draw near to God. We can come to God. It's the only way. And Jesus is that only way. Hey, thank you for watching today. If you haven't done so, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave me a comment down there and I appreciate it very much. Thank you for being here. Hope you have a great, wonderful, blessed day today. God bless you, my friend.